Before I get to the main event, I wanted to show you a, a regular slide rule. This one's kind of beat up. Uh, it's probably 40 years old, if not 50 years old. But slide rules basically work by lining up the numbers on one moving bar, and then you'd have a slider, and that by moving the slider and setting the numbers, by going further down the scale and finding the intersections of the numbers, you can find the answer to a problem. The downside of a slide rule, of course, is that it's not instantly crunching the numbers and there's a certain amount of finesse in understanding where to slide this back and forth. I'm not going to get into that today because I think oh, a lot of people have either seen held a slide rule or they're aware that slide rules have existed. Um, but what I'm about to show you is something really unique. Are you ready? Well, this box contains a Thacker's calculating instrument. This is a mahogany box. It is pretty old. And we flip open the box, and in it we have this that comes out. This is the calculating instrument. Now you might ask yourself, well just why the heck would anybody come up with something so strange, convoluted, and alien to everything we seem to know? Well here's the simple answer. Remember we talked about the old slide rule and you'd be moving these sliders back and forth? Well, in complex equations, calculations, math, you only have so much movement on these things. So this is like a 12 inch slide rule. Well, by using cylinders and whatnot, the virtual size of this slide rule, if it was a flat slide rule, would be about 10 feet long. So how is this thing used? Well, truth of the matter is, I really don't have a clue. You do something with this thing, you move it around, you slide it back and forth, you line up the numbers on the bars here, and you'd be able to calculate your answers. The kit, such as it is, does come with some instructions. And if you look down along the bottom here, in a real tight area to get into, uh, I couldn't read this without some sort of magnification, is the simplified uh, instructions on how to operate this. I was able to go online and locate a reprint of the original operating instructions so if anybody wants to go online and do that you know be my guest. Um, operating a slide rule is not that all difficult and if you can use a regular slide rule you'd be able to use this. Well just how old is this puppy? Well if you take a look at the end You'll see it's, uh, it says, patented by Edwin Thacker, CE, November 1st, 1881. There's several models of this particular instrument. I'll be honest with you, and I don't know the exact age of this one, but from reading through the literature on the internet, I believe this is one of the original models. Uh, you have the 1881 information here. And it's what you don't see that tells me uh, it's one of the older instruments. On the next generation that they made sometime in the mid-late 1880s, at the ends uh, of these bars, these parallel bars, there were a number of large letters that were stamped. And that was helpful in operating the device. But as you can see, those letters are not present on this particular device. This is the manufacturer's plate on the instrument. Uh, I'm hoping I'm saying this right. Cuffle and Esser Company, New York, St. Louis, Chicago, and San Francisco. On the opposite side of the cylinder from the patent date, we have made by Cuffle and Esser Company, New York. You know, when you're doing a video about an antique uh, calculating machine, it's really hard to be dramatic. 
but let's try some camera action here. Here we go. Here's the whole thing. And I started from this point because I wanted you to see all the calculations here. And then as I pan, you can see all the different bars. And let's just give it a little bit of a spin here. You can see the numbers lining up. And then you can see how when you slide it in or out, you can have the uh, results tabulated for yourself. Where did this come from? Uh, where is it going to? Well, it's not mine. I was able to borrow this from a retired engineer. Uh, the story I have on this particular instrument is that it was recovered uh, from the general offices of a steel foundry in Chicago. This particular foundry was located on Sacramento Avenue and the uh, railroad tracks, the old Chicago Northwestern Railroad tracks. So some of you know from my channel that I really enjoy railroads, rail fanning. I'm kind of hoping that uh, this had been used at some point in the development of the railroads. The instructions that I mentioned uh, the ones you can uh, get online, uh, they talk about all the different uses for this instrument. And I noticed that one of the uses was to calculate the load on a steel truss bridge. And if you can calculate loads of steel truss bridges, you can imagine this is a pretty sophisticated instrument. And you could probably do um, a lot of factory type work with this. It's not just a ma uh, matter of the production in your factory, but all of the logistics that go into it and then the support services. One page of the instruction manual uh, was devoted to calculating earnings. You could use this to uh, calculate how many uh, hours a person worked, uh, at what pay rate, and what if anything needs to be deducted from their checks. This being of course in the pre-income tax days. All right, well, I'm going to put it away now, and I'm going to be very careful to slide this in and get it all even. If I was a true museum type, I'd be wearing white gloves while I did this white cotton gloves because the, uh, oh, the oil on person's hands multiplied by 120, 130 years of use uh, can damage the wood and this paper type product. And it's back in the box. And I gotta get it back to my friend. So I hope you enjoyed this video of the Thacker Calculating Instrument.